Hey, everybody, can you hear? Yes, 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 yes. All right, let's do this again. Call. Oh, I have this is TPIM SR Live on True Powers Mind calling Judge Joe Brown right now. So, yes, Judge, you're, okay. you're yes, we're live, we're there, we oh. are there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, uh, the TV uh, viewers, the listeners. I got Judge on the line, and uh, we're going to talk about some things that we kind of talked about the last show that was basically uh, deleted by YouTube. All right. And uh, I got the backup running right now, so we're good to go. Uh, Judge, if you could, could you kind of illustrate real quick for us just how important the city of Memphis is for commercial uh, product in the United States and, and damn near the world? Okay. Memphis, first off, Memphis International ships the largest logical commercial cutting out of it uh, anywhere in the world. Hong Kong Airport ships approximately one half of the tonnage that Memphis does. You've got FedEx located here, UPS, the bulk mills that are international paper. Most of the uh, larger American grain consortium ship out of here. All of the rail traffic is centered on this place. The trucking industry is centered around and about place or I-40 corridor. So you've got the main transcontinental thoroughfare, I-40, passing across the Mississippi River, which is the main river. So this is sort of the distribution center of the United States. It's cheapest statistically to ship from Memphis if you're shipping anywhere in North America. That's Canada, U.S., or Mexico. So it, it's a place that Europe and the Mediterranean are looking into as to a destination for their shipments. Uh, instead of putting stuff on containers, on ships going across the North Atlantic and winding up on the eastern seaboard of the U.S., which caused a lot of fuel, weather delays, storm damage, and then you have to unload the stuff, run it through customs, warehouse it, suffer um, pilgrimage, and then put it on a train to get it to Memphis before you can put it on a truck for final distribution. Meanwhile, uh, using barges in most of the European industry that are centered upon rivers, canals, and such like, you can load up a barge using standard containers that work on trucks, trains, planes, and barges. You get these containers uh, on the barges down in the Mediterranean. You float the barges onto a barge transport, which looks like a thousand foot long streamlined oil tanker. You can see a lot of the port in the world. You bring it over the mid Atlantic where the fuel costs the lower because the weather is better and more predictable. You unload all of the barges down at the port in New Orleans. You do not run them through customs. But you get them tugged, and they bring them four to eight at a time up the Mississippi River, which takes 30 days, 32 days to get to Memphis. They're unloaded at the world's largest barge unloading facility, that is President's Island in Memphis. And that's when they're first run through customs. Now, Memphis has an unusual situation in that it is the 14th largest uh, city in the country, it's also the largest predominantly black city. In fact, the city only has 19.1% of its registered voters are white, but they control everything because we got these penal Negroes, house Negroes, and bed wenches who sell their soul and they run five and six against each other on purpose. Right. The split of the vote. Are by white candidates. So without a runoff here, which we don't really need, white people maintain control over the important offices or have regained control over the important offices. Mm. So we've got a gay congressman, for example, for the ninth district that first became a black congressional district in nineteen seventy four when Harold Ford Senior got elected to it. Then his son, Harold Ford Jr., became the congressman, and now they've got this character, 
Steve Cohen, whose claim to fame as he introduced the legislative act last year, the mandate that the congressional cafeteria use only paper and straws and not plastic. <laughs> and he has supported every gay rights uh, thing that has come in front of Congress, but he's done nothing for black folk, nothing about the educational reform, nothing about student loan reform, nothing about prison reform, nothing at all about entrepreneurialism, nothing at all about uh, small business advancement, nothing at all about the middle class, black or white. So that's what we've got right now. And every time he runs in the primary, Democratic Party primary, he usually has four or five black people running against him. There's no runoff. He's the Democratic candidate for congressman in the ninth district. And well, the colored folk around here are so enthralled to the Democrats that they don't know to stay home or vote for anybody else or even come up with a strong grassroots alternative. So it's a mess. Something needs to be done about that. Nobody pays attention to the judges or the DA. And we've got some racist criminal court judges, one of whom created a scandal even with his white supremacist uh, bunch about some of the things he posted on Facebook. So it's what it is. No. But if it could be the Chicago of the 21st century if it will work right and it could be the flagship for black entrepreneurialism, uh, entrepreneurism, um, for black education, black economic development, and black power. But it's not. So we have to do something about that. But is there any segment of... I guess, higher black society that's getting paid from all the commerce that's coming into the area? No. They get chicken change, although there's an occasional scandal. There's a Van Turner who's on the county commission. He and a lesbian young girl, 32 years old, running for mayor with no platform other than I'll discover something, who has gotten a lot of money from the white incumbent to run found that out. Uh, that person essentially uh, went along with Van Turner, also on the county commission, who under the guise of getting rid of Nathan Bedford Forrest's statue and that of Jeff Davis, was allowed to acquire items of property for 2500 a piece. Yes. Now, the Thing, thing about it is that those properties are appraised collectively for about $25 million. There was no bid. It was done in secret. And he got $25 million for the property and simple absolute taxpayer's property for five grand. So that's a rip off. Also, Tammy Sawyer, who is the one running for mayor, is the half sister of a notorious black politician. Who guess what has been paid a big chunk of money to store the statues in one of his storage facilities that he rents? So he gets. So that's the kind of corruption we have. Damn. Uh, little signal stuff like the city council selling a corner with a stop sign on it and it's a development for fourteen thousand six hundred dollars, and then buying it back for six point eight million in ninety days. Money went under the table for it. Mm, mm, mm. And there's so no type the of uh, fee or blowback from the community when this stuff is pointed out in the papers or on TV? Well, it doesn't get reported in the paper, but it is known. The interesting thing is, is there was only one black contractor, black lawyer, a senior black lawyer, and some black city councilman wanted to attack him about why is he getting 10% on the dollar for collecting uh, overdue fines and calls to the city court. Well, it turns out he was one of 19 subcontractors. He's the only black one he's getting 10%, and the other 19 who were white were getting 20%. Wow. See, this is what I'm talking about, Judge. You know, people are always talking about economic this, economic that. How can we do this when we know that private companies 
don't they look at the color of your skin they don't care about the color of your money apparently the government too well they care about the color of your money but they don't care about the color of your skin and they know that we aren't in a position to give them big money see most of the wealth in the memphis area from the people that are supposedly wealthy does not come from their effort per se it comes from them having had a history from father grandfather etc of doing contract business with the city of memphis or the county and shelby they get rich off of that the main scheme that the black city councilmen and county commissioners go along with is putting taxpayers money up to pay one of these developers to build the project, then allow him to operate it and only pay 4% of his or her net to the city or county and $1 rent up front. So in other words, there was a, a center at the end of Beal Street called Beal Street Develop uh, Landing. And it opened up three years ago. And what the deal was is the taxpayers paid $35 million to build it. And they were letting this guy run a gift shop, bar, and grill in there. And he made him 4% of his net if any, and $1 a year a month. Now, that's not private enterprise when the city or the governmental entity builds it for somebody and funds it. Right. That's just a rip off. And it seems like they're taking turns the way you described that first. Yo, let's hook up Judge, and then we'll hook me up, and then we'll hook up this other brother, you know, a couple years down the line. It's like this has been planned out over decades. Yeah, well, yeah, it basically works that way. And the problem is, with the exception of Dr. W.W. W. Harrington, who got elected to five terms as a mayor, and then he retired, uh, we have had no firm handed control. Now, Doc Harrington is like six feet. And he's a former undefeated Golden Gloves heavyweight boxing champion. And he tells the story of he was on his way to St. Louis for his first pro fight, turned around and said to hell with this and got his PhD. The game wound up being superintendent of schools and then the first elected black mayor of the city. Now, I will give him this. He made a point of I promised the community that if elected, one thing I'll do is control the police department. He did. The director of police here sits at the pleasure of the mayor. So he fired five or six of them. Uh, basically, he made it known that if there's anything that looks wrong with the way the police department is operating toward the black community, if you don't correct it, you'll be fired before you get home on the day I find out you have. So he did that. So after a while, the next director that got in said, oh, I like my job at the bank. So I want to make sure stuff happens and, you know, cop, you can talk to civil service on Monday, but the day on Thursday, you're behind is fine. Mm. So it got to the point, interestingly enough, where you could drive through black neighborhoods and you might find an elderly person waiting at the stop sign with a tray with a thermos of coffee and some donuts to give to the cops because they were being the good guy wow. for a change. So while he was in office, we didn't have any cops get shot and the community relations improved. There was one month where the police department and the city council, dominated by black folk, got into a big squabble. What happened is the police said all of these people here are poor. They can't afford to repair these cars. It's not unsafe per se. They got to get to work. So they refused to write tickets. They only wrote 700 tickets for one month. So the city council cut the pay off, and the cops just apologized to everybody and said, we'll let run roadblocks and ticket everything we find. And meanwhile, burglaries can rise, and all of the crime that could be prevented by us to control it, we'll do what the city council says they want us to do. So then once they got all of these people jacked around, it turned out nobody could collect on it because they were broke. Right. Yeah, I but got the police department was trying to help out. That's a change. Now they're right back to the same old, same old Gestapo mess. <laughs> Let me see your papers. <laughs> you, I got a lot of questions from the chat room, Judge. Why is the churches not doing more economically in the area to help folks? Because there's fundamentally they pimp. And the more 
we suffer, the more miserable we are, the more money they make. Wow. See, they tell people that you're feeling bad, everything's going downhill, the key to this is to pay, you know, the tithe, the pass, the collection plate, fill it up for Jesus. So, of course, it kind of gets small, it doesn't get to Jesus. I don't know where he is these days, but he sure as hell gets on the back of the preacher's wife, gets a new fur coat. Or on the preacher who gets a new Bentley or Cadillac Continental or Mercedes to drive. Right. And the, and the parishioner, the person going there, only gets more, what, sorrow and pain to take to the yeah, altar? Yeah, pay more money. You know, <laughs> if you tie 20% instead of 10, you'll be guaranteed to get more results. Who? Well, it's 20. Well, the Lord is telling you you should do 25% instead of 20. You ain't serious in your belief, so you got to show it by tithing more. Mm. It's a tip rack. Mm. I hate the fact that what you're saying is so true. That I mean, that's really discerning. I mean, we're gonna trade out people's spiritual well-being so that you know, me and you, you know, you're the deacon, I'm the bishop. We put this thing together, and it's just a racket. And you would think. That somehow, some way, karma, whatever, would get these people, but it never does. Well, see, your spiritual well-being is your business. But the truth of the matter is, is we've got thirty-some million dollars a year sucked out of the black community that mostly goes to churches and other stuff like that, and it does nothing. It's not used for economic development. It's not used. Or enterprise is not used for education. Wow. It's just so how are we gonna see we that see they caused us before slavery was over to be dependent upon the church. Right. And they converted the church that black folk were following into an institution that propagandized and brainwashed black folk. It being to be good slaves and then good servants and then prone to praying rather than doing. So there we are. Everybody always prays about something instead of doing something about it. Man, that see, just, I mean, what you're saying is the truth, but the religious people will be like, oh, no, that's wrong. You just keep faith in God, those prayers, and the next thing you know, magic will happen and you'll come out of your condition. But you're oh, saying yeah. no. That's what they say, but there's a direct connection between the black church and the impoverishment of black people. There's a direct connection between the black church and the lack of a family in the black community these days. Wow. There's a direct connection between the black church and the violence that goes on in the community these days. So, you know, and, and maybe we're all supposed to go to hell, and that's a good thing for us <laughs> to get there so white folks can get rid of it. But if you're going to go to hell, Judge, why you got to be impoverished on earth before you end up there? Uh, because that's, the, you know, it's like you've been worshiping something for 400 years and it hasn't done anything for you. I would strongly suggest that you find a new faith. Of course, you probably have convinced yourself that you have to prove that you have faith in your faith. <laughs> but it seems like this faith black folk follow is one design for the people that taught it to them which is good for them but not for us. Exactly. But you can't tell anybody that so that's a matter of you know, do you really care about it other than for perceived wrong? You know, I'm not worried about going to heaven or to hell so, you know, that's not one of my concerns. Well, I tell you this much, Judge. One of the most, um, I guess, impactful thing on the show that you have ever said. I don't think people have caught it. Uh, I asked you a question as, you know, uh, from a judge point of view, if a person comes in there and profess how, you know, Christian or Muslim or however religious they are versus a person who's like an atheist, like the atheist will get more consideration because you have said that you have seen people with strong religious convictions do some very serious crime. Ser seriously. Uh, Islam is not nearly as bad Christianity. Judaism is more associated when you run into it in a defendant with white collar criminality. But not always. There was a period where they were just as violent as anybody else. But there are bad people, but it takes religion 
to get a really evil version. Wow. And I did a survey for years and years on sentencing, and the ones that claimed to have been raised in a church committed the most heinous crimes and offenses. Uh, were the repeat offenders, and basically what I'm looking at when I analyzed it was they have an out. They get told now that doing good deeds won't get you into heaven is what you believe. You can be a sinner, you can be a dope man, you can be a pimp, prostitute, you can be a murderer, a thief, a robber, whatever it is, but if you believe, you'll get to heaven. So what? there's nothing to encourage good behavior. Of course, that's to keep the collection blade low. Nobody tells the young girls to keep their legs low. Yes. To watch what they wear in church. They right. had a thing on where there was a big deal about the girl got discriminated against because of the airline said, if you want to stay on this plane, you have to wrap yourselves in a blanket. Mm. Well, she had on a loud short set with her shoulders and everything out. She didn't look good in it. I'm sorry, but she did. She was sloppy. And it was just not a broker. Mm. So, I mean, I was getting in my car just before you called me. I got in, and this guy walked out of a place where they denied him entry, and he had his pants all the way down below his butt and his <laughs> cheeks to show his pants and box. What is he doing? No shame. Well, it's just, see, I've seen other things where they say, what's wrong with a guy wearing stuff like that? Look at this girl. Her butt cheek broad. Yeah, but it's a girl. You're and right. She look kind of sexy. But what are you trying to look like? And for whom? All for what? Oh, uh, Ed Buck special, Judge. They're looking for a little, a little pay for play. Yeah, well, I wouldn't be surprised because that's how it started off in the penitentiary. It meant you were a short-termer and the lifers and long-timers needed some booty. <laughs> and you were being groomed to be everybody's booty. <laughs> and it became the signal that you belonged to somebody that is strong. And then it became a bad for all of the black youth and Mexican youth to dress like that. Right. It's almost a form of buck-breaking, Judge. It's like they're buck-breaking these boys and they don't even realize they've been broken. Be careful. They will ban this from uh, YouTube again. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I'm so glad. Thank you, Judge, for keeping me on task because... You know what? The problem is these folks have a right to do what they do under the Fifth or First Amendment. But what happens is they are against the family. They yes. are against masculinity. Yes. They are against the traditional relationships between man and woman, and that's what makes the world go around. They don't like boys and girls 101A. Right. They claim that their excuse is they're born that way and can't help it, but they're actively trying to recruit in our school. And we don't particularly like the way they're trying to inculcate their particular sexuality into the children and how to do it. Right. You know, it's kind of like, what's going on here? Like Orwell in 1984 with animals, and also an animal farm, we came up with all animals be equal except some, the pigs are more equal than others. Yes, sir. So they are entitled to advocate what they want, but nobody else is supposed to be able to push back. Right. But that's not American. That's not First Amendment. Right. So, but they want to get around that. And then they have other stuff, too, I've seen. Uh, they advocate getting rid of the Fifth Amendment and a lot of the Bill of Rights because they say it shields people they don't like. Well, where the hell did they come from? <laughs> where you can put somebody down in this country because you don't like them? I mean, legally? Legally. I mean, not that it doesn't happen. There's the Klan, the Night Riders, and such like. Uh, but it's not supposed to happen. You know, where somebody says we need to change the law so we can do it more easily. Right. It's almost, Judge, it's almost as if you're talking about subverting a nation one step at a time. Well, yeah. See, these people hate themselves. That's not what they say. They have, But they hate themselves. Wow. And they have that poisonous hate spreading through the entire society. 
see it's like if you're a man, you can stick your chest out and say, I am a man. Yes. The same for the woman. But they want to sit there and say something else. You know, they don't kind of like that. Or even if they are male, they want to act like they aren't male. Or uh. Even if they are trying to be a tranny, <laughs> they still want to switch their little butts walking down the street like they're girls. Or they want to put on some men's work boots, bib overalls, and plaid shirts and stomp their feet like they're some kind of guy. I mean, that sounds <laughs> like male hatred to me. <laughs> yes. And Mel they come hatred. Up with these phrases, which is a new word, it's only about five or six years old homophobia. Oh, but come on. Because that's just a propagandistic tactic to voice on your opponent or your opposition your own attributes. So the real thing is they are heterophobic. Right. You aren't homophobic. They're heterophobic. They're scared of us. Because we can make babies, Judge. And the only thing they can well, make is death I and disease. they could do if they wanted to get into that, but they seem to have other ideas. Oh. I mean, I don't care. See, what, I, I always have this rule. What somebody does in their bedroom, as long as they aren't killing each other, is their own damn business. Yes. But when you start trying to bring it in my living room, then it's my damn business. Oh, but you got to be silent, Judge. You got to bow down to this political correctness. Not me. Do I sound like I'm being quiet? No, sir. And then people say, oh, how can he talk like that? He's a judge. Well, let's put it this way. I have the title. But I retired from being a state judge 20 years ago. And, <laughs> you know, I retired from that show five or six years ago. So the deal is, is by the way, I got a new show coming up. It's called Hot Topics with me. And we'll talk about Hot Topics. It's going to be debuting in the fall on uh, the weekends. Check your local list. That's, you've got six weeks already done some pilots. Yes. Comes across, we'll do every day of the week. Uh, it's four very beautiful women, one from Puerto Rico, one's Mexican, one's black, she's a doctor, and then one from Costa Rica, that's a sister. So they all have lives for your the end, and me, no one, uh, no have lives for your boy the end, you can pretty much your head. If I told man, you know, hey. But it's crazy. What? Listen, and all of this stuff is going on politically about all of the government breakdown, shutdown, and everything. Right. I have a sinking suspicion that all of that is a smoke screen to cover for all of the stuff that certain people in both political parties are doing for the Skittles people. Oh. <laughs> you know, Skittles. The rainbow. Yes. Phil, I have to interject this real quick. This is from the Firefox 8192. If God does not destroy America, he will have to apologize to Solomon and Gomorrah, the book of Leviticus. Hey, they just got the ass kicked. That was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> and nowadays, geologists say from the evidence in the area, it looks like they got wiped out with an asteroid hit somewhere up in the Alps, you know, where the uh, large meteor hit up in the Alps, and you know, those where the uh, projected uh, debris turned into a cinder. They turned to ash, which I guess would look like a pillar of salt. Yes, because but she turned her it, back. It, it, yeah. And well, then, I get the sentiment of the statement. It, 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 it bears remembering. Well, but there's a little more to the story, though, Judge. Don't forget about the threesome up with the daughters in the cave now. Come on. We got to tell the whole well, story. Oh, man. They just got their freak on. <laughs> <laughs> got that wine up flowing. I mean, when we really look into all this stuff, we got to keep them in, 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 I guess, perspective that we're dealing with people that were quite literally out of the Stone Age, quite literally out of the Stone Age. And yes, oh, yeah. some of the truths. It was the Neolithic, New Stone Age. They hadn't gotten into the Bronze Age yet. Right. And that wasn't all that far after the last ice age yet. But we're pretty primitive. In other words, take some backwoods savage 
Oh, you know, I didn't want to say that. Time, doesn't ever take a bath. They don't have toothbrushes. You know, I guess they're pretty funky, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, funkiness and gay yeah, when sex. When you run around, you never brush your teeth in your whole life. You, know, you, you probably could come up with some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to even think about the hygiene factor, Judge, because then it's unfair. Hey, you wait know? a minute. who laid down the foundation for his holiness, the Pope. <laughs> These are, you know what Damn. I'm saying? <laughs> you can't just throw him under the, the bus like hey, that. Wait a minute. You know, and it'd be a long time before anybody has been in toilet, Jesus. <laughs> can't wipe, can't brush, can't wipe. Boy, that must have been fucking. <laughs> <laughs> if, 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 even if you were saying you would be seeing all kinds of things with that is my smell floating around like this. I'm not mocking the word, brother. Um, we have a comment from chat room, brother Derek. Now you're mocking the word. I'm not mocking the word. Hey, anything can be made fun of. There is nothing on this planet that should be above humor. If it is, it ain't worth dealing with. And if it can't survive it, it ain't worth following. Right. Because what I'm talking about and what the show is ultimately about is getting this society to evolve to the state where it should be at. There is no think, reason. Think rather than fear. Yes. Critical thinking is the key. Solving the problem will require more than relying on some prophecy, relying on some notion that magic will occur. It requires men and women to pull up our sleeves, hold hands, and work this thing out. If not, then let's just continue down the path, Judge. We'll probably end up having another genocidal event within the next 20 years so that this century will be just like the last century and the century before that and the century before that. Well, there's one difference. In about 25 to 30 years, this will no longer be a majority white nation. Wow. They will be a minority. Wow. Wow. Well, we got the hood and we got the barrio and we got trailer parks. We've got reservations, but I guess they'll have an expensive, uh, expanded trailer park to live in, you know? Right. Well, While Judge. The rest of us live in barrios, ghettos, reservations, or wherever in the hell we find ourselves. <laughs> Let me say something that'll probably get this show demonetized right now. You know, how come, Judge, uh, I can't go as an American citizen to, say, Bel Air, Manhattan, uh, Hollywood Hills, and pitch a tent as a homeless man in the borders of those municipalities? Yet, at the southern border, we're expected to allow anybody and everybody in, or the northern border, every border of the United States. You know, it's like on a national level, immigration doesn't matter. But when it comes down to a, a person being homeless, oh, it damn sure matters where you put your butt. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, these upscale places that you mentioned, they pay more in property taxes. And the police get more of their salary from what these people pay in so they get more attention. And they ain't going to play. Yeah. So they ain't going to play with the, the trailer park has to play. laws that preside over the courts are trying to live in those areas so they don't play that either. Mm. Mm. The other thing is, is I'm not against anybody coming in here from anywhere, but do it legally, damn it. Yes. It's got these rules, follow the rules. I mean, hell, if you go over the speed limit, you get a traffic ticket. Right. I mean, they will jack you up for looking funny some places you may find yourself aboard here. Yes, sir. So what, what, 
this problem with me want to turn a blind eye? Well, I have an idea. Why? Why? Because this country has bought into this mythos of private enterprise. It says the government can stay out of everything, which it should not. And there is nothing on the table right now in the United States of America to deal with ordinary workers being made obsolete by industrial technology. Yes. Yes. So what happens is they've got all sorts of control mechanisms to keep people being foolish, stupid, and unproductive and cutting themselves out of the labor market. And in some of those things, they do. So people cut themselves out provide such a level of dysfunction that there are some entry-level jobs that need people to fill. Hence, the drive to bring in the elite. Mm. Uh, one other thing, too, about the census, the far right claims that the Democrats want to bring in illegals so they can have them commit fraud and register to vote. Right. That's not what it's about. What they want is for the illegals to come in and swell the numbers of people in a given area so they will have more congressmen afford yes. to represent them. If you get more congressmen, the interesting thing is, is these people who come in won't be allowed to think whether they are a citizen, and it will be harder to find out whether or not they are citizens that can vote, but you will apportion congressmen an area based on illegal, perhaps, right. and that will wind up duplicating, guess what? The Republican Party? No, we are familiar with it. A lot of people don't get it. They talk about black folk were supposed to be three-fifths of a person. That wasn't what the three-fifths was. It's the South reached the political compromise with the North because it has fewer people. So they got to count three-fifths of their slave population for uh, purposes of apportioning representation in the House of Representatives. Wow. Wow. So you, what happens is, is your representation is based on a population that is being counted that can't vote. Right. So if you count the illegal, that helps apportion the number of people in Congress if you just count them without determining their status, but they can't vote now. As far as this thing about acting illegal, the last census I remember this, I had a bunch of houses. I got asked on three different mail-in questionnaires, was I a U.S. citizen? Where were my parents born? Was I born in the United States? Did I claim citizenship through a parent who was? Was I born on a naval base, military base, or something like that? Or was I naturalized? They asked that. So this last census, uh, I don't recall that, but up until 1950, that was a regular question. I have an ex-mother-in-law who was a Canadian citizen and a long-term resident alien. So she always answered, I'm not a citizen, but that didn't keep her from being counted because she didn't have anything that she was trying to hide from. Right. And the people that hide are going to hide any damn way. <laughs> so not being allowed or you are a citizen counts on giving the Census Bureau an extra hard job by having to use other means to determine how many of these people in this area are U.S. citizens that ought to be counted uh, as requiring representation. See, that's right. what it's all about. There yes, there's money allocated, but that's a recent thing based on acts of Congress. The real purpose of the census is to apportion congressional representation. Right. You, I got a question from the chatters. This is from Young Elder Truth Seeker. Why are wait? Why are we taking everything from the citizens and inviting others to come into the country at the same time? Because it creates confusion and in this confusion the Skittles crowd is getting very advanced by both the Republicans and the Democrats. Right. Mostly by the Democrats. Right. You know, I want to take a, a real quick second to try to get Dr. Short back on the line and then we can continue this. Hold on one second, y'all. If this phone will work.
Hopefully he's at home now. Well, Judge, I apologize for that. I don't know uh, what happened to Dr. Short. I uh, just tried calling him, and there was no answer. Uh, but I do have, like, a comment slash question uh, from, okay. the, from the uh, chat room from Lawrence. Are Catholics pushing illegal also and threatening to excommunicate professionals in the media and politicians if they didn't push it? Uh, do you see Catholics having a vested interest in uh, a swelling – the illegal ranks. Yeah, they're more so bad than ever. So it goes back to the church pimping the people, getting more money? Yeah. I, I remember 50 years ago, uh, a guy named Rex wound up marrying a black woman in Chicago. He took us on a tour. We went to the shanty down outside of the Sonoma. And he was getting furious because these Catholic priests were encouraging these. The only term for it is peasants to breed. And the priests were saying there's no order recognized by God. They could go up north and this creates more souls for the Catholic Church. Mm. One woman we walked through had twenty had, had twenty seven children, looked like a wreck. Wow. She had maybe seventeen of them still alive. And until they got 10 years old, boys and girls, they wore dirty, filthy T-shirts, and they were naked from the waist down. Ugh. And they were catching large cockroaches and roasting them to eat on uh, unraveled black food hangers. Dang. <clears throat> and they had to walk three miles to get water from this other dirty well. So there was a whole lot of and other waterborne infections. Damn near everyone in there was infected with some sort of intestinal parasite. See, that's no joke. Uh, no, I, it's not. Filthy and it's evil. Mm. I got a question from Sister Alexandria from the chat room. Ask the judge about the Article 5 constitutional crisis and will it happen and what will happen to the black folks? There's no constitutional crisis and nothing's going to happen to us. The government is very stable. The Constitution is pretty good. We do not need a new one. It's a set of rules. The rule book is pretty sound. Other than you copy it uh, it's the players. So there's no constitutional crisis. Trump is doing what he is entitled to do under the Constitution. One of the problems with the propaganda is that they are not telling you what he's entitled to. One of the things that gets me is listening to presidential candidates talk about how they're going to cut taxes or they're going to grant reparations. And under the U.S. Constitution, they do not have the authority to do that. Those wow. particular two things are the exclusive domain of the House of Representatives and the U.S. Senate. They'd have to pass an appropriation bill or a tax tax bill would have to originate in the House of Representatives. Wow. So they lied to you about what they're going to do and if they got elected. So, Judge, how real is subversion? How real is subversion in our present form of government? Meaning congressmen, women, judges, or perhaps even law enforcement elements going outside of the law to promote their particular agenda. It, it, look, this is what gets me. This is nothing new. This is like anywhere you go, you've got thieves and burglars and robbers and other kind of things, rapists and everything else going on and murder everywhere in the world. Mm. So the part of the human condition, we are the apex predator on the planet. And yes. If the child is not properly socialized and acculturated, 
they are quite capable of doing pretty horrible things to other people. So with this being the case, we have to look at the real history. Black people now tend to be poor. Well, they're really it's actually a lot better than it used to be. I mean, for example, Disneyland in Anaheim, 1968. Uh, myself and three other guys were working. We were in a government state of California vehicle. And we were working for this professor, and he had to find this place where they did experiments out in Anaheim. It wasn't but about five miles from Disneyland parking lot. Uh. So we were lost in the top of the over turn the lights on. He said, Are you lost? He said, yeah. So when we told him where we wanted, so he said, well, That's why it's not get lost. You can lay down here. So he gave us some threats. He said, well, Let me say something calling you, sir, right now, and it's about 4.30, but it gets dark around here at about 5.20. After 5.20, it's going to be nigga, not sir. Do you understand? Mm. And that's Disneyland. Damn. Get your ass out before dark, or else, sir, you become a nigger? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. In Inglewood, all the black folks talk about this shit that's going on in L.A. now. It's the hood. When I was growing up, if you were in Inglewood passing through after dark, and you didn't have somebody's pass in your car, saying that you worked for them, uh, Inglewood police would jack you up. And what you mean by jack? Tell the young people what you mean. mean throw you on a wall, beat you with a nightstick. Damn. Stomp on you. I'll give you an example. We had a black lieutenant governor for the state of California. His name was Mervyn Diamond. 1967, that was a blowout when four mostly black high schools just walked out saying their education was too flimsy. They weren't getting a vigorous enough educational experience. So a lot of us went down there to see what was going on. Well, Mervyn Diamond, who at that time was a state senator and represented the area, and I were talking to each other. He later became, within a year, two years, he became first black lieutenant governor for the state of California. Anyway, he walks over and says, Lieutenant, uh, Captain, rather, uh, State Senator Mervyn Dallas, this is my district, etc. Standing right next to it, the captain says, well, good to meet you, Senator Diamond, and shook his hand and said, this is Lieutenant so-and-so, this is Sergeant such and such, and Sergeant or whatever his name was. He said, Sergeant nodded at him. Uh, and Sergeant said, yes, sir, took his knife stick and whacked the future lieutenant governor oh. of the state of California right across his head, beat him to the ground, and kicked him behind. Wow. After he had shown his credentials. Damn, dude. You're, you're talking about man of respect and honor. I, I have a question for the chat room. Yeah, but, but, I mean, when you hear all this stuff about how bad police are now, it pales by comparison with the way they used to be. Right. Especially like you said in that one story, the brother just had a brand new car, man, some drunk ass fool, messed it up. He's trying to get the officers to do their duty, and he gets shot in the shoulder for his well, efforts. Well, it wasn't him. Four or five other people got the car ruined. So finally this car says, oh, you want me to do something? I'll give you something to complain about. And he pulled his revolver out the shot. So now you got something. Come on, boys. Yeah. And the cops and stuff went off. We went back some time later with the law professor we were working with, and they had removed their pictures from the precinct book. That was three conspicuously missing pictures. Damn. So, I mean, this, this is the way it used to be. That, that and, and, and it can never go back that way. Uh, Judge, yeah, real quick. I mean, see, right now we get upset about some crazy stuff. Some of it we need to get upset about. Some of it is like, okay, where did you get the idea that you can act like this any damn way? This right. person was really acting the damn fool. That no business doing. So, I mean, we used to say, you know, don't bring it down to a small head. Act like you got to instead of acting like a fool. Right. I'm going to ask this question from the chat room. This is from Justin. 
<clears throat> True Power, can you ask the judge if he thinks that they will ever let Wesley Snipes do a movie codenamed Zorro? Or does the judge uh, want to put anything out talking about the truth about what happened? Well, with Wesley Snipes, yes. I was at the trial. I testified. Uh, he got convicted of failure to file a complete set of tax returns. IRS had a quarter of a million dollar check for him uh, because he overpaid his tax. Uh, what was crazy is this U.S. attorney in an area that has the only freestanding Ku Klux Klan paraphernalia store in America decided he wanted to get the tax preparers. So there were 11 of them. He got all 11 of them and Wesley Snipes. And what was so foul about it is Wesley was one of 4,200 of their clients, the only one they indicted and the only one that was black. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So he wound up getting three years. Interestingly enough, 18 months before that, Geithner, that's Barack Obama's Treasury Secretary, pled guilty to failure to file millions of dollars in taxes and defrauding IRS. And he got, quote, a $42,000 fine and he got six months suspended. There it is. There and Wesley it is. got three years in a minimum security penitentiary. You know, Judge, if you have any way to contact Wesley, I would really, really love to have him on the show. If okay, he does, I'll see if I can do that. I think he's in Europe right now. He he's been doing movie projects. If you watch, uh, he's he's been the writer on a number of projects lately. Yes, pretty smart guy. He's a and brilliant by the way, man. He does all this stuff. He's actually a martial artist and a real source. Wow. See, that's the type, you know, forget the criminal bullshit, but that's the type a man, young men should aspire to be disciplined, honorable, and noble. And that's what he yeah. is. You know, I got another question from the chat room. This is from uh, Sister Alexandra again. Tell the judge that Epstein agreed to plea deal. He will spend five years in prison, but he has to name the names. Who does he think he will name? Obama, Clinton, etc., or who's in the deep state? You know my answer to that one? I don't care, and I don't give a damn, because essentially for us is irrelevant other than another example of acute hypocrisy. Yes. With being caught up in this trap of having an inquiring mind and pay attention to stuff that's more relevant to you. Wow. Yeah, he needs to be in jail, and yeah, he gets special kid glove treatment. Yes, yeah, That's there it not is. Appropriate. It's what I call country club justice. Well, the, but judge, does that also reinforce young people saying, "Forsake honor, forsake duty." As long as I get the money, I can be as shitty as I want to be. As long as I have the it money, does not justify that a man is a man, damn it, and a man always has duty, honor, obligation responsibility and accountability. That's what makes you a man. To yes. stay in control of your emotions and your circumstances to be prepared to do that. To yes. keep your nose focused on reality and to go as far forward as you need to go to take care of your damn business. Mm-hmm. And if you deviate from that, then you're a punk. Right. And there is no excuse for being a punk except they buy into this Skittles nonsense about it's okay to be one. There, there it is, young people. You hear it? There it is. There's no excuse. See, see, and in our hood, we get this thing, yo, man, I'm already a day man, man. You know, like I'm 23, I ain't going to see no 24, man. There ain't no daylight at the end of my tunnel, man. Mm. So damn what? It ain't your problem that there's no daylight at the end of the tunnel. If you were a man, you would be trying to get those people that you are responsible for, that you should be responsible for, that you probably have never thought about. You need to get them through that damn tunnel and get yes. them through the flames and the smoke and kill off the fire-breathing evil yes. boxes that are spreading confusion so they can get to the daylight at the end of the tunnel, even if you don't. That's your job. That's that is man. it. That's it. And you're running around trying to get somebody to help you commit suicide by provoking somebody you're doing a drive-by on 
all that mess. Listen, women, and this is for you women. If you don't have a man that the judge just described, a man that's willing to put his body down so you can walk across it with them babies, you should not spread your leg for him. Ma'am, you Amen. are wrong. Amen. And one example they had out on Twitter, I know, was this fool videoing himself trying to tell his girlfriend, who was kind of cute in the little short, short, bare shorts down there in the dirty, on the dirty asphalt, changing her tires. And he said, and not being a man that you can't change the tires. You a man doesn't have to change the flat tire, you know. And I don't know how. Well, fool, didn't you go to school, you dumbass? You should have been able to read the uh, <laughs> owner's manual and got the instructions on how to train the tire, just like she did. Yeah. Punk. <laughs> you know, Unmanly pump. It, embarrassing. It is. It should be shameful. Put his ass down and leave him, and he's going, why are you crying, baby? Because I'm, I'm letting you. you. Man don't have to change no flat tire. You have to change it for that woman if she's in distress. Yes, that's your duty. Think of it as your mom, about, your why sister. Don't you call AAA. Well, hell, you change the tire or you call AAA on your AAA card or you get yourself down in the dirt. You change it, fool. And he <laughs> was riding with her. <laughs> See, you know. I got one more question from the chat room. This is from Brother Lawrence. Ask Judge, what uh, does he think about the big drug bust on J.P. Morgan's ship? Look. Innocent till proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That's the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. But what do you expect? Hmm. Deutsche Bank should be doing the same move. They should be moving some drugs, making some money, because Deutsche it's Bank... But, but, but see, this, we think wrong. Yo, how come they always busting us for doing drugs? <laughs> you know, that's a good question, but why are us up doing drugs? Exactly. We don't do that. We've got we're... enough damn problems without cloud in our mind. Right. And then everybody, man, you hear that legalized Reba, man? <laughs> well, I know you. You definitely don't need to get high any more than you already are. <laughs> you are nothing but a pothead, and you are lazy, shiftless, unreliable, and you ain't doing anything more today than you were 27 years ago. Wow. Wow. But that what do you need to be happy about them being able to smoke without getting busted? You don't need it. But let's talk about the business side of it, Judge. Uh, you well, may smoke it, but you won't be able to open a uh, dispensary. See, there's a lot more money that keeps being made, not because of the drug trade, but because of a number of people who have been made dysfunctional and are kept out of this labor market. It's overcrowded because industrial technology and computerization has obsoleted so many people in America yes. who otherwise aren't working on their level. Now, yes. I don't particularly like Trump, but this is the lowest unemployment rec, uh, rate in 48 years in the country. And for black folk, the lowest unemployment rate in going on 52 years. So I have noticed, I have done some experiments around here in Memphis, gone to every restaurant for a mile and a half, two miles on a section of the street where they're located. And every single fast food or sit-down restaurant says they're short-staffed. They can't find the people they need to hire. That's because people have moved up out of those to better-paying positions. Hold on, Judge. Here's uh, Dr. Short. Hold on. Let me uh, – I'm going to add him. Hello, uh, Dr. Short. Uh, welcome to the show. Can you, doctor, are you there? Yeah. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're live right now. Hello. Hey, how are you, Judge? I'm fine, Doctor. How are you today? I'm okay. I want to tell you, you're not just a judge. You're a prophet. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hold on, let me. Uh, I'm going to take this off the Bluetooth speaker. I think it's causing too much that, by the way. feedback. Hold on. 
All right. I just got it, got it on regular speakerphone. Hopefully everyone can hear still. I was saying that Judge Joe Brown isn't just a judge, he's a prophet. Thank you, sir. And I'm in the middle of this prophecy. We now less than a month and a half ago, Judge Joe Brown told us all that these people do for flooding, overdue. It's not happening any day. It's flooding here in D.C. And whatever this rain, if it comes from New Orleans, what's this thing called? Barry? If that comes up here, that flood, the flood the judge told us had to come, it's likely to come. I'm going to flood all kinds of stuff. It's, uh, oh, no, they can't hear. Hold on. I'm going to try to put you back on the speakerphone. They're saying they can't hear in the chat room. All right. Is that better, y'all? Or can you say something, doctor? I'm saying that it's flooding here. All right. Now it's good. Now you're good. It's flooding. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully you have insurance. Well, not where I am, but there are parts of the country that took all the black folk out, and they're getting hit by all these disasters. Mm. They've run the folks out of Miami, run them out of Los Angeles. They were all out of waterfront areas. Yeah, they run out here out of these everything they gotta have. And judgments are fall on people. They think this stuff is funny. But judgments here, you know, it's just up in the office just before you call. And there was a gentleman, he was Jewish and he was watching the news thing at Trump. And I said to him, I went again, and the man just went nuts. And he said that Biden was going to beat Trump. And I just want to say this, because a lot of black folks don't see this, but it makes me sick. This man hates Trump's guts, and Trump does everything he can to keep Jewish people happy. I think Judge Joe Brown will agree with me. From his son-in-law, this is anything a Jewish person wants, Trump's trying to do it. Mm-hmm. I think you would agree with me, Judge. He's not trying to I make Jewish with people mad. They dislike him because he's not for the civil crowd. You know, feel the rainbow. Right. That's his prime. Everything else he's done, given land that wasn't Israel to Israel, folks in Syria, killing people in um, Yemen, threatening the Iranians, all of this to let them know he's for them, and it's not enough. Anyway, yeah. I said to this man that Biden, Biden can't win. And I said, because black folks aren't going to vote in 20, not for Biden. And he had something smart to say, and I came back to him and I said, I'm sorry, sir. They lynch black people in Delaware. They kill black people in Delaware, mistreat them in Biden state. You can't get people like me to vote for him when we know this. Now, these same Jews who would have bitched and cried if one Jewish person had been hurt. But he immediately dismissed that, and he started saying he was with Obama. That's because Obama didn't do anything for black people. He didn't do a damn thing for us. Well, I said, I told him he didn't do a damn thing for black people. He says he was good for the country. I said he was good for some parts of the country. We're not voting for Biden. So Trump, if we stay home, it's a shoe in for Trump to win. This man nearly lost his mind. I, okay. I think you were calling it exactly right, doctor. That, that's like you're, you're taking the available data and you're making a call. That's like me calling it some weeks ago. It's going to flood in D.C. It's flooding in D.C. You call it, it is flooding in D.C. But, you know, I just call it predicted. 
No, Doc. I was telling people about what you told me about the sea flooding. And when it rained the other day, I said, you know what? What Judge Joe Brown is about to happen now. He tells us, and then it happens. You see, you can say that you're just giving us available information, but a million other people get available information. But the timing of when they deliver a message, and then it happening. See, the, the measurement of a prophet is if it happens, just like you said it did, in a in period of time, even if it's years, it's so. And now everybody's afraid in D.C. The flood wall in D.C. that you're talking about, now they're afraid for. It's not retaining water. Every day now, we get flood alerts in our phones. Well, it, a it whole bunch a of people. Worse. It can get a lot worse. A lot of, it's going to get a lot worse. Last year, we had a record amount of rain. We even had tornadoes that they didn't report. We even have many tornado, tornadoes, little small ones, whirlwinds. I've seen one in my backyard, which is very small. It came through and tore up all my tomatoes last year. It came down and up everything. It was there for about a minute. It just tore up and threw everything. There have been a and couple of hurricanes like that have come through very close to D.C. that if they're just a few more miles closer to the land, will wind up with the whole D.C. mall underwater. Mm. Well, it was underwater. Okay. It's a landfill. That's not really, that's a mudflat. Anacostia and the mall, and even the thing called Haines Point, West Potomac Park, is uh, a floodplain that periodically is underwater. Um, my ancestors used to be uh, hunting oysters and, and crabs and clams on the places because, they, you know, the bivalves would be washed. They'd be there and they'd wait for the, the tide to go out and pick up the, the, the mollusks and the crustaceans and, and eat them. So this whole idea of the mall being safe is a myth. Even the land that the Lincoln Memorial is on wasn't, wasn't solid land. They need that land to build that on. The swamp. So, right. A marsh. It's going, to, it's going to happen again. If this thing down there, if we keep getting rain, last year we had 66 inches of rain. The way it's going this year, if this thing comes, we're going to have more. It rained so much last year, a lot of people's gardens died over because there's too much water. Uh, the bees even come out and pollinate stuff because it's just, you know, the bees aren't out trying to put no uh, pollen on the uh, plants. And if, if it's raining. So I, I, I got practically no tomatoes or anything. A lot, of, a lot of stuff I didn't get last year because the bees didn't come out because so much rain. And I was looking at California, too. You know they're about to have the worst. They're going to have fires out the air starting in October, September. It's going to burn like it's never burned. All that rain, all that, all that vegetation. And a lot of this I see as a judgment. If you look at Mississippi, all the beaches have been shut down due to alga. It's almost like the plagues from Exodus on white that's, America. Yeah, well, that's just the predictable effects of climatic change. Um, Mm -hmm. You can't ignore Mother Nature. She's a real bitch. And she gets vindictive when she gets angry. <laughs> yes, she is. Yes, she is. You know, gentlemen. Judge, I got something else to tell you. And I'll shut up. Are you following this thing that's going on where they want to legalize prostitution in the District of Columbia and seven states? Yeah, I've kept up with that. Uh, they have it legalized in Nevada in certain districts. The theory is... Well, they want, they, want, they want to do the whole state, as you know. Yeah, well, the deal is, is you can't stop it. It's called rural second oldest profession. The reason it's the right. second oldest profession is it depended on what ever hypothetically was the, over, the oldest profession in the world 
to raise the money to pay the practitioners of the second oldest profession in the world. Mm. Uh, that mm -hmm. is, if you legalize it, you can control it, require a medical and checkup so that you get disease under control and such like. And when it is not sorted and just criminality, but it tends to clean up a bit. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. That's like legalized marijuana. I was just remarking a little earlier about why in the world are black folk excited about legalized marijuana. Many of us have a problem with overuse or abuse of the stuff anyway. And if anybody needs a clear head, it's us. Right. Sobriety. Right. Well, Judge, you know, in the state of Colorado, uh, convictions of black people for marijuana has gone up 62% since the legalization. Yeah, They're I know. Still packing, packing them in the jail. So it's a lie. I know it's, it's a lie. The other thing, too, is see, it's still against the federal law. As long as it's against the federal law, you've got to go bend on the federal prosecutors and DEA not prosecuting what they could. And in a federal trial, if you prosecute for a federal offense, the jury can't even be told that it's legal in the state. Right. Mm. right. Ain't nobody reads the Constitution. The Constitution of the United States is about nine pages long in a small pamphlet. To get the pamphlet, most of the rest of the stuff is explanatory, not the Constitution. A lot of it isn't even any effect because it was only good to like 1806 so that the government could be set up. I have a question. What do you two think about white nationalism and how its role is being played in the national, state, and local levels? Well, they've got some frustrated white folk, and they've always done what they do when they get frustrated. They aren't on the bottom. We allow ourselves to be remaining on the bottom. So they can scapegoat us either literally or just figuratively. Mm. I, I, I agree with, and there's something, I feel like reading something. Read. Judge Joe Brown would just laugh because I think Judge Joe Brown would have been a fan of a friend of my dad from childhood. And a friend of my grandmother and grandfather, they had a buddy. You may have heard of her. Her name is Nanny Helen Burroughs. I may have. I can't recall right now. She had the National Industrial School for Girls in Washington, D.C. And uh, I was in her papers yesterday. I took some young people down. I have a program. It's called... Uh, uh, testing the waters and what we're doing is uh, checking to prove and expose something that everybody knows but that D.C. has a major lead contamination problem in our water supply and we just tested up in, in Maza Gallery you know uh, Chevy Chase where the rich people live and uh, lead was 50 parts per million up there with our very primitive testing capabilities. So we're going to go to the left side of town tomorrow morning, and I bet you it's probably 100 parts per million, 200 parts per million up there. Yeah. And uh, this is why we have so much violence and a lot of other things. But I have Sammy, uh, I'm sorry, no, Nanny uh, Helen Burroughs' speech and I want people to hear this because it would sound almost like conversations that we all have repeatedly. And this conversation is from like the 19, from the 1930s, maybe, if not the 1920s. Lay it on us, Dr. Matt. And when, when you hear that, you're going to say, oh my God, nothing has changed. Everything That's what I was saying a little before you came on. It's 
It's been like this forever. Everybody's acting like this is a new condition. Right. It's not. Right. No, it's, just, it's the same old thing. I want you to hear her words. She suggested that they act like she doesn't exist. They got a part of the city that's neglected and they named Nanny Helen Burroughs Rose. And, and that's where they have the Marvin Gaye uh, Park. It's an underkept, under maintained new park for Marvin Gaye. And, and, and by the way, the, the, the Negroes, let me tell you, it's so bad here. The new scam in the city now is that they've got Africans paying bribes to the public, to the hiring people, and now they're firing all the African Americans and giving jobs to inept Africans who paid them bribes. I noticed. And it's, it's, it's how long before black folk, um, and this is being done to us by certain types of, this is why, you know, I'm a Christian, but I can't tell you that I love whom. I, I assure you I don't. Pray for me. <laughs> why? I feel nothing. You mean like you're doing I don't all feel, right? I, I don't have I'll love for you. whom. I'll help you, but I won't pray for you. Okay, yeah, I have no love for coons. And when you read, I'm about to pull this sister's thing up. It's so amazing how stuff that you hear every single solitary day and that you're saying, that you say, Dad, I, I hear other people. I was saying to another brother when people say, oh, you're too critical. You're a black conservative. You're so reactionary. I said, have you ever read Frederick Douglass or the people who you have their pictures up on the wall for Black History Month? If you if you looked at what they said and you listen to what I'm saying, I am uh, doing exactly what the ancestors did. Okay. All right. So let me read this to you. She gave a speech almost a hundred years ago, Nanny Helen Burroughs. The title of the speech is "Unload the Leeches." and parasitic toms and take the promised land. What she says is what the Negro must, what must the Negro do to be saved? She said the Negro must unload the leeches and parasitic leaders who are absolutely eating the life out of the great struggling, desiring mass of people. Was she talking about Pamela Harris and Cory Booker at all? Oh. And Obama. And, and, and she said, Barack, you mean Barack, Eric Proto, a.k.a. Barack Obama? Oh, my God. You mean, you mean Ophaga? Ah. She, she said, chloroform your Uncle Tom. Negroes like that went on the style 70 years ago. They are relics and good for museums. I don't care whether they are in the church as a preacher and the school as a teacher and the ward as a politician. The quickest way to get rid of them is the best way and the sooner the better. They are luxurious, expensive, unworthy. The Uncle Toms are the greater enemies than Tillman and Coldblaze have ever been to the Negro race. I hear that. Oh, no, 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 this is this is bringing it. And she says, um, they sold us for a mess of pottage. We got the mess, but not the pottage. <laughs> the question is, what am I going to get out of it? Must get out of our thinking. This race would have been 100 years advanced had it not been for this thought uppermost in the minds of our so-called leaders. We don't have any deliverers. Don't wait for deliverers. Um, I like that quotation, Moses, my servant is dead, therefore arise and go over Jordan. There are no deliverers, they're all dead. We must arise and go over the Jordan. We can take the promised land. The Negro must serve notice on the world that he is ready to die for justice. That I have been preaching, yeah, yeah. The battle and overcome the absolute defeat of every force designed 
I'm sorry, let me go back. The Negro must serve notice on the world that he is ready to die for justice. The Negro is ready to struggle and battle and overcome and absolutely defeat every force designed against us as the only way to achieve. Men must have life, the opportunity to learn, to labor, to love. Without these fundamental virtues, we cannot achieve. We must not give up the struggle until it is obtained. No charity. More than this. The Negro must glorify the things of the spirit and keep the things of the flesh under control. Excuse me, we must get. Let me interrupt. I got to get out of here. I'm going to have to sign off. Doc, you got it under control. Uh, but I've got something I got to attend to in two minutes. All right. All right, Judge. Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm going to email this to you, Judge, if please, you want it. So, sir, please. Okay. Right. I will All do right. that. And it's Let a pleasure keep going. It's always, everybody. It's now, always, it's always judge, always judge. Can I keep going? Yes, go on, doctor. He <laughs> said no charity. More than this, the Negro must glorify the things of the spirit and keep the things of the flesh under control. We must get a correct sense of values. When we've accomplished this, Shiloh will be here. Human beings are equipped with divinely planted yearnings and longings. That's what the Constitution meant by certain inalienable rights. Right. Don't, ap don't apologize. The Negro is oppressed not because he's a Negro, but because he'll take it. Negroes, forget your color. Stop apologizing for not being white and rank with your race. Organize yourself inside. Teach your children internals and eternals rather than the externals. Be more concerned about putting in than getting on. You have been too bothered about the externals, clothes, money. What we need are mental and spiritual giants who are aflame with the purpose. The Anglo-Saxon has four loves, the love of liberty, the love of woman, and love of life. He'll wade through blood for these. When we wake up our minds not to take substitutes for them, we'll fight them. But we're not going to get them as individuals. The day of the individual of individualism is past. We'll get them as a great race or group. We are a race ready to crusade, for we recognize that we're a race on this continent that can work out its own salvation. A race must build for nobility of character, for conquest, not on things but on spirit. We must have a glorified womanhood that can look any man in the face, red, white, yellow, brown, or black, and tell the nobility of character within black womanhood. Listen to what she says. Stop making slaves the servants of our women. We've got to stop singing. Nobody works but father. The Negro mother is doing it all. The women are carrying the burden. The main reason is that the men lack manhood and energy. They sing too much, I can't give you anything but love, baby. Women can't build homes and rear families off of love alone. Men ought to get down on their knees to the Negro woman. They've made possible all we have around us, church, home, school, business. Aspire to be, she concluded. And all we are not, God will give us the credit for trying. Mm. That's Nanny Helen Burroughs almost 100 years ago. When you and I talk and folks call us Uncle Toms and conservatives and coon, we are saying exactly what the ancestors who stood up in worst times said. We're almost identical. And it seems as if the same forces that we were fighting in our community, we're fighting now. Right. We're fighting coons and sellouts and people who you haven't heard much about Nanny Helen Burroughs. Now, Nanny Helen Burroughs used to fight the preachers if she fought anybody black or white mm. and nobody talks about this lady and other people who stood up who dibbled was right who were fearless she died broke she never married everything she devoted was to lift up black people and we don't know about such folks and that says something really bankrupt about black people that they're people who would die for them and they're not even worth the memory Wow. I mean, see, um, what that says is that, you know, if you give your best in everything, 
these folks are more interested in Little Wayne and Nas X than Nanny Helen Burroughs or a Nicki Minaj, that piece of trash. Well, didn't she just recently do a show, though, Doctor, in Europe or something? And what did she do? Was she was she clothed? Did she oh, clothed that's not her me? gag. You know that's not her stick. That's not her niche. You know what she does, Doctor. She's a uh, whore. She's another woman's private thought. That's her niche. I wow. mean, it's amazing. You know, when a, a dude comes out and he's by, he's gay, he, he loses record sales and folks come down. And when the sisters are lesbian, they, they, they act like she's a superhero. Um, that That's interesting, the double standard and how we treat this thing. Man. You're, that's and that's she's so singing, true. She's singing gospel music now. Nicki Minaj is rapping. You know... When you look at Nikki and you look at the people in her category, they're doing that. They're not getting their money from us. So, you know, we can't stop that. Even if you boycotted it, it wouldn't matter, doctor, because her money is coming from another zone. So I guess I, I ask, how do you combat that? And also, before mm-hmm. you answer that, Doctor, Sister Alexandria, I want to have you on the show as a guest. You're an author. You have a book. There's no reason you should be just over there in the font. You need to come on out and be a guest on the show. Now, Doctor, uh, back to Nikki Minaj and uh, the way she gets who's her money. About, who's talking about being on which show? Uh, well, there's a longtime listener. Um, her name is uh, Alexandria. She's author um, of a self-made black woman. She is very awoke. She's she's very intelligent. Uh, I promote her book. I promote her her work at her website on past shows. Uh, I would like to have her on as a guest so that she can shine in her own right and use her words to talk about her work. You know, she is a, a superhuman being. She's adding something to the human experience collectively. And, and just like you, you know, a lot of people will not agree on the totality of what you say. But, doctor, you have a large effect on a lot of people out here. They know what you're talking about. They recognize your expertise in historical facts and and not just the facts, but the way you present them and how they basically work together to achieve the experience that we're having today. Mm. That's amazing. Um, All I can tell you is that I encourage her to just go ahead and and forge on. You got to, you got to tell, you got to put it out there. You got to uh, do whatever you can to, uh, make people aware of what you're doing. Um, That's very important. And she said, oh, thank you. I'll do the show. She will do the show, doctor. It is a victory. Okay, that's great. Um, It's it's, everybody's got to do their part. Yes. I say to people, I know I can't do it all. I don't want to do it all. I want lots of people to um, to uh, do whatever they can do to uh, to get people thinking. It's very important. You understand what I'm saying? It's very important that more people think. You know, it's very important. Yeah. Um, you gotta, know, we've got to wake people up. Not only that, Doctor, though, um, one of the shows that we past did a uh, – commenter wrote something that was profound and it was a female one i forget her name but i know the comment she wrote some of of these people i think it was sister sandra some of these people need to stay asleep we don't need to wake up fools that are going to sabotage what we're trying to do we don't need to wake up individuals that are going to rudy poot and blah 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 we only want those who are woken that wants to work for a brighter future 
want to work for a future that is governed by duty, respect, and honor, not weakness and lies and, and, and all that, but being happy that we're alive and being happy that we're doing the righteous thing. What do you think about that, mm -hmm. Doctor? I, I'm in agreement. You can't save everyone. Everyone doesn't want to get saved. You know, we have a program right now, and we're working with young people, right? Right. And we ask for 15 people, right? And the coons in the city government ruined, uh, destroyed our recruiting process by, by not doing their, their work, right? Right. And we ended up with just one person when we could have had 15. We went in to confront them and said, hey, look, um, we asked for 15. You could even send us the worst people, but send us 15. You know what happened, don't you? They sent us 12, and out of that 12, four came. Man. And of the four, uh, um, let me see, two of them are flaked out. One of them was like a chunky um, uh, pro-Black Lives Matter type with a lot of opinions and such. And I just ran across an article, something I had experienced, but I didn't know if it was me, but um, it turns out it's so. There's a thing called a mosquito. It makes a lot of, it makes a uh, high frequency noise. It's very annoying. It repels right. um, young people, people between the ages of uh, 13 and 25. <laughs> they have good hearing. And it's, it's, yeah, they put this in parks and places, here, even here in D.C., to repel young black people in particular, okay? I was trying to tell this dumb young sister that a lot of stuff that they do with the music, it, it assaults and violates and attacks the young people, and it hurts them. And um, like a lot of, forgive me, loud mouth, disrespectful, man-hating, sisters brought up in these single parent households, anything a man says you disagree with. If he's black, they suck up what white men say and what white uh, feminists and others say, but if black men says you have to argue and fight with them. In the middle of our conversation, she kept cutting me off. She accused me of not listening to her. <laughs> she blamed me for not listening, whatever. She had to have all of the rules, everything, and be the victim while insulting me. Wow. Okay, I'm three times her age. You know, and anyway, you're an elder. No, fuck that. You're an elder. She should show you the damn respect yeah, no, you deserve. No, 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 that does that doesn't mean anything. I get it. Uh, I'm a male, but mean something means something to us, I'm doctor. Usually, but, it means something to but us. What happened? Hold on. What happened? I was able to send to the group, and they were all able to hear the sonic sound that was irritating. <laughs> and I said to them, "Do you realize they do this on your recordings and other things?" These artists agree to do this awful uh, scientific, non-consensual experimentation on their own black peers so as they get paid. What? That isn't fair to you. And how dare you tell me because I'm older and I'm aware of stuff you don't know, I shouldn't tell you. Well, if I don't tell you, and I live, I told them, what, 18? I'm three times as old as you are. Not that that means I'm special. It just means I've been here. <laughs> I've seen some stuff. In fact, it I can see something survived. happening that I understand better than you do, and, and even based on experience. And we have to be able to talk to each other, hear each other. I said, you know, I listen to you. I'm not fighting. I'm not trying to walk on you. But they were able to see that they're being targeted. And then I began to explain right. to them that they use these same sonic weapons yes. on the young people in Baltimore and the Freddie Gray uh the, the, the police instigated secret weapon instigated so-called riots where they let these kids out of school. They used these repel things to drive them into an area. Then the police picked the fight with the youth and they fought back. Mm. And I said, no, what they had wanted was the mayor to have those children shot down. So this is it right for the police to shoot and kill you when they set you up to act out? Right. So I said, you little chunky peel with the nose ring seems to think that whatever the artist does is justified, even if it results in people's deaths. Now, I bet you if the music was going to kill her, she'd have a problem. So Big we time. have this stupid individualism of all generations of black people. And it, it, there's not this common thing. Remember what you just said. We're going to make it as a great people or a great group, not as individuals. 
So when folks celebrate uh, phonies like Obama and, and Cory Hooker and <laughs> Kumala and Barrett, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, my whole point is the system is so twisted that you have so-called black conservatives that don't recognize the laws on the books. They, the black conservatives are not typically trying to uphold affirmative action, uphold uh, equal housing, of, uphold that all do. that. There's some that do. There are two, two types of people who are going to be these conservative types. The same way that you've got just two types of black people. You've got the nationalists and the assimilationists, okay? Okay. And the nationalists are always going to be for the group, okay? So you can say you they're socialists. and it's good for black folks, you can count on me to agree with it. Okay. If it's negative for black people collectively, you'll, you'll get nothing but hostility from me, okay? Um, a conservative who's an assimilationist, is against blacks having anything because the goal is for blacks to no longer exist. But if how is that even possible, doctor? People. That's not possible. We are the original template. Look, All other human beings come yeah, or but, derived but from but us. What, what, what difference does that make to an ideological assimilationist? It's the same way that these so-called trans and gender people want to make men, women, women, men, and it doesn't matter. The facts don't mean anything. It's the ideology. It's the idea. There, it is a religion. It is a faith. Okay? Uh, that's more important than all the information. And, and you will encounter that. All you have to do is ask, what did Obama do for black people? And you can get black people to argue that he did something and say, please tell me something specifically for us. And when they realize they don't have anything, they'll start yelling and screaming. Mm. Because I can't admit that I'm stupid, that I can't think, I can't untie my shoes intellectually. But that's the first uh, part of critical thinking. something specifically that that man did. And yeah, you like Michelle. I mean, but in as much as Michelle knows whether Obama's straight or not straight, She's got all the dirt on him, and he ha obviously has dirt on her. Mm. As a first lady, if she were down for us, she could have gotten something out of the work for black people, which she did not get. She got a garden, doctor. So, uh, um, and most of that stuff went to white people in the city where most of uh, hungry people <laughs> doctor, are black. Doctor. So, no, See, he would know, y'all. He's in D.C. He's not talking from way out the way. He's right in the cut, so he knows. They didn't, they didn't do anything for us. Uh, Obama only went to Howard just before he's going to leave, and that was to help Hillary. These folks, I mean, Michelle, a little better, but overall, by the way, Michelle's buddy, who was head of the EEOC, they put all the gay people first. Black folks were losing jobs the whole time Obama was in. Their priority was helping homosexuals. So how is this, and doctor? Way, Seriously, doctor. The way, the, how the is it that the, the gays against the gay movement that because they see the absurdity and that these people are greedy and it's overreach and you still see stupid people in particular one of the things that obama helped let loose is this crazy immoral um agenda which is why if they were to legalize prostitution one of the things that happens, the same way that white cops killed black men because they're jealous of dudes with big penises screwing oh, white women no, in the video. Oh, my God. Uh, when they see black women as prostitutes and whores in the videos all the time, even a black professional woman can't be treated with respect because that's all people see is black women with their behinds with tattoos on it, jiggling and uh. so forth. And no black woman is treated <sighs> with the respect and honor that she's due. Yes. And there are people, black Democrats, many of them black women. And I keep saying this, I don't care how many black women I make angry, until black women, the same way when Ludacris had, I have holes in all area codes or something like that, and the women were mad that a woman's behind and was treated like a beast when he was flying a credit card between the buns. Right. And all the sisters wanted black men to go out after Ludacris. And, and that's legitimate. I don't see black women go after people like Simone Sanders when they attack black women and disrespect them. And it's two-faced. And it's time for there to be an army of black women that defend black men 
and there needs to be an army of black men to protect black women. And when someone gets up and dogs black men, like what Oprah Winfrey did to Michael Jackson, that I don't care how much skin white men, I don't care if his kids are like uh, sperm milkshakes with white men. Um, Michael Jackson wasn't as negative as Lee Daniels and other well, people. It's, speaking it's of Michael Jackson, Michael I have a video or a audio of Michael Jackson or an individual claiming to be uh, MJ that I haven't released just yet, y'all. And in the next few months, I probably will release this video. But, doctor, the imperative point is what is the consequences for the Kamala Harris's or the Cory Booker's or the Rowan Martins? What is the consequence? You mean, roll, low, roll, low, roll over Martin. And did you see him in that video where he had shorts on? It looked like he had his mama's uh, house slippers on. <laughs> I saw and, the Black and Authority. He had a biker video. Pants. It was not. He had a biker pants or, or, or what he had panty liners or something to make it look really tight. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Roland Martin's yeah. doing what Roland Martin's doing. You know, he's not asking nobody for money because he's paid on that on that tip. I get it. But those people, when we look back in time and space, are going to be shown to be the scumbags that they are. Individuals like yourself, doctor, like uh, Mark from Anaheim, Judge Joe, uh, Lance Scurve, all you guys are going to be looked at in a different light, in a real light. Because what you're talking about at the end of the tunnel, doctor, is respect, <laughs> dignity, and honor, and being a productive human being. Mm. Or am I wrong? That's all we're talking about. And I'm not talking about anything radical. I ain't right. trying to hurt nobody. Right. Although if someone, I did do an interview and I said that people should throw eggs at um, John Lewis. Eggs. Now, well, we could just get people to throw eggs at these people in the CDC. That state black leaders that get sick to eggs when they go out in public. And I'm also following the tradition of our ancestors. Um, Malcolm X had people throw eggs at Dr. King when he was talking too much immigration. Um, I think that's fair for some people to throw eggs at these so called civil rights icons. That would kind of bring him down to earth. But then again, as much as he probably likes being on his chest, he likes being down to earth. But put in a different way. Right. So, it's, so yes, right. we're resisting John Lewis. We are resisting John Lewis and all of them. We, we need to push against these people. By the way, pretty soon I know some people that are putting together some entertainment. Um, some really good entertainment. Um, I'm looking forward to that. You know, um, we're going to be doing all kinds of stuff, podcasts, and we have people that are going to be doing puppet shows. Um, it's going to be good. The sound, they're saying the sound's too. muffled. You know, once again, this show is plagued. You know, I know this phone's good. I've talked to Dr. Off Camera a million times. I know the sound quality should be good. Sorry about this, Brother Lawrence. Um, I'm going to try to just put you on straight speakerphone, doctor, and hopefully this will be somewhat better. All right. You're on a straight speakerphone. Mm -hmm. I just thank you that get ready. We're going to be doing uh, broadcast, podcast. Um, there is a puppet show. If you saw Norbert, which is really funny, the Eddie Murphy movie, you must see some very fascinating things happening. Um, yeah, we're going to have all kinds of fun, different characters in the group. And uh, giving a... Uh, no speakers. Uh, to, yeah, to, to, to uh, black history current events. That way we can't get too much... Well, 
and and I, I I'm gonna I mean I'm gonna get to play an old civil rights character, you know. This is and, what I'm um, talking it's, about. It's gonna be a lot of people are gonna be laughing. I might need you to um, get me some protection because folks can't stand. I think I told you that the congresswoman in Florida was complaining about people like me making fun of her. She does it like Muhammad Ali the Down syndrome, trying to be a um, cowboy <laughs> saloon madam. Um, <laughs> you know, it's not my fault. Oh my uh, so, yes, I've been calling her uh, and enjoying calling her. It's so good. Uh, we we have to mess with these people. By the way, I'm really loving this. Have you seen that the Democratic Party's gone crazy? They talk about reparations and this, that, that, that. It's so beautiful. <laughs> Listen, the only thing I really want to see in this country is for three classes of men to truly unite. I want to see the men who have been incarcerated work with the men who are free, never been incarcerated, and work with the men in the industry who are actually making the moves. If those three classes of men work together, we could win. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening in D.C. I've been meeting with the brother, one of the brothers who works with the returning citizens, and my partner knows them. We are going to bring them in on this issue of the lead, because I believe that the water, if people have high blood lead, and that leads to aggression, there are a lot of people who uh, should get uh, reduced sentencing and all sorts of pardons because they've been poisoned by lead. Yes. Instead of treat it like they're vicious people, they have been the victims of environmental injustice and racism. They have been and, victims. Uh, they are victims of a plot to destroy you using water. This exactly. is like Doctor Strange Love, y'all, the movie. But this is reality. This is people's lives. The good doctors working to try to benefit. And we started today, brother. And then we go out tomorrow and for the next three weeks, we'll be checking and testing. And we're trying to raise money. we got to go fund me out there. Um, it's on my Facebook page. I guess I'll send it to you so people can know. And, yep, we're asking. We're trying to get it. We have some cheap stuff. We need to get We need to get uh, a water test for this one. It's like a $340 job that we want. Uh, but we've been doing this stuff out of our pockets. Um, uh, it's too bad that we don't have, uh, well, actually it's not too bad. We're going to figure out how to get the resources to do it. On top of that, we're working with uh, one, two businesses. So we're going to be uh, within, I'd say, month time. It's not a month. Within two, three months, we're going to be employing people and paying them as well as you have to join like our union and our union would be that you have to, some of your time has to be advocating for your community. One of the things that I'm hoping with these brothers that have come out, it's a challenge in the army to protect black women and children. We're going to, we're going to fight this prostitution in DC. Me and that rule, the mayor we have, the one that looks like Arsenio with, without a mustache. Oh, wow. And I, I mean, I can just feel him and me fighting. Okay. <laughs> it's just the way it is. Well, we were just and, talking um, earlier about... She doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't like men anyway, so I have nothing to lose. It's no way for me to get along with them. We have these very high-strung, anti-black male type, black Democrat females. They're nuts. Well, you look at the states that are trying to legalize uh, prostitution, and the only classes that will impact is poor whites, uh, middle class to poor black women, middle class to poor Latino women, and middle class and poor other women. And men, those will be the ones in the brothels. And that's why they don't want these robots out here, doctor. Because if you have robots to fuck on, then what's going to be become of the whore in gigolo? I think there's always going to be a need for the human touch. You, you know, think? can you imagine if a computer, on so to say, a robot short-circuited and it was masturbating you and it pulled your thing off? And, you know, it's like going to it. So we have no... <laughs> okay. Well, you have one hell of a 
liability lawsuit. But doctor, it's like sitting here. If this was 18, say 1817, talk about, <clears throat> you know, fuck what Henry Ford's talking about. Nobody's going to want to not want to ride a horse and experience nature in its wonder and splendor. You know, listen, there's something, we're you know, talk, we're, talk, we're talking about a whore, not a whore. <laughs> yes, we are. We are. But there's something to be said about the human ingenuity. And when someone's an expert in sexual copulation, to what extremes and to what resource gathering will they be able to be able to conjure this machine, which in all essence will be a jack off machine versus the human touch which if you look at MGTOW how it's growing the human touch isn't all that much in the average mind of the conscious male out there well I, I think that um, it's like porn uh, the more people look at porn, the nastier the porn has to be to satisfy people, okay? Okay. They're going to have to have more, more and more complicated dolls. In fact, uh, pardon me, I haven't seen some uh, inappropriate things over the course of my life. I recall uh, there was a black magazine called Player from way back. I'm going back 40 years, 42 years. And I remember that there was a specialty doll in this thing. I saw this as a kid. And the doll had, um, the doll had a, um, it could talk. This is an old doll. And this doll would, you won't believe what the doll was trying to say. I'll never forget this all these years. Uh, the doll would say, uh, pardon me, ladies, beat me, fuck me, but respect me. Uh, uh, I don't respect your ass. Get in the car. Let's go. <laughs> wow. So that was that somebody needed, even then, with the crude, far less sophisticated doll 40 some odd years ago when I saw this thing. Was it 77? So it'd be 42 years ago. It's not like I keep, but I remember this. That was, I never forget that was hilarious. Um, people that see this, okay, right? People that see this need to understand that I'm certain that people are going to want to be able to talk to the doll. And they're going to need the doll to say, yes, daddy, that was really good, daddy, whatever. If it just functions like a washing machine or a dryer, um, people will get bored with it, and they're going to have to enhance and put new add-ons. And uh, this one, um, in fact, uh, there's another on. thing—the product that they had called the Bionic Booty—that uh, <laughs> on the go. <laughs> Bionic uh, this this is, is sick, dude. <laughs> this is for if you're going to do it, for, we're more complex than what we're that what these people are prepared and they're going to have to consistently the same way they keep increasing for xbox and all the other things playstation i guess they'll, they'll even have gay station they'll have a male dog school and there'll be gay station they'll keep, you know <laughs> add different things on and uh, they'll have to keep having new releases and you know Updates. it'll be you know um fake fake poopy one fake poopy 2.0 Fake to the remix 3.0, and, and as I keep working on people, say, man, I really didn't like to upgrade. But can I get an original like we had like a year ago? I lost my jack on the update. I'm sorry. Listen, doctor, let's cut your, let's let's cut this bush right at the fucking bottom. You know, ain't no real man talking about. I'm gonna sit there and whack off and not have the real human touch. Not have the real mm -hmm. woman touch, not just human, because that will imply some real freaky shit. But I'm talking about man woman touch, man woman love. That's what the game's all about. You can dress it up, you can perfume it up, however you want. But at the end of the day, it starts off with two strangers and one getting jizzed on. 
Yeah, well, the point is, is that even if they have a doll jizz on someone, or uh, if the woman buys a doll with cum balls, um, um, <laughs> they can shoot at them and hit them. I don't know. <laughs> whatever it is. I mean, wherever that, that gets boring because who do you talk to when the mama dies? Uh, who, who, do you, who do you talk to when you've aborted your baby? Oh my God. Who do you talk to um, when you're just bad? Or how do you take your automated doll to the uh, restaurant? And what are you going to do? Get your head under the table while you're waiting for your own? I mean, you know, if people going to do this you stuff, plug them in, Doc. You plug I, them in. At the I'm just being honest, you know, and um, what am I supposed to show this blow up down respect? Like, hello, I mean, sir, you and madam. The, 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 the awful things that people need, okay, right? The bizarre things that people need. I mean, if you have a doll that put his foot up you behind, what if it got stuck? Um, stuff. There's a, a very, a, I was talking to these young people. Trying to get to understand this stuff is really off what's out of here. I think the name of the uh, book is called Fools Found Inside. I'm going to pull it up right now. There's a person that had an anti aircraft shell up there. <laughs> <laughs> like a 55 a millimeter was, round. They stuck up their fucking ass. They, they, had, <clears throat> they had the cowboy from Toy Story up there behind. They had videotape. One person had a loaded gun. <laughs> but this is the sickness you're talking about. Oh, you're let, talking me get, let, let me get let me get this because people think I'm making this stuff up. I don't know. I just happened. This came up on CNN about ten years ago. I didn't know. Um, it's the things found inside. So when does bestiality come into play, Doctor? I mean, seriously. Once we open up this I Pandora's know, box. Know. When are we fucking, you know, rabbits and foxes and horses and goats to try to make a new human okay. being like the ancients did okay. with the Sphinx? Here we go. It's, it's, it's here. Don't take my opinion for it. It really doesn't. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't rank for me. I'm just telling you. No, I'm just talking to someone. But they have this. This is a thing called rancor, and there's 14 craziest objects found inside of people. Uh, by the way, did you hear about the woman that had the turtle removed? No, a turtle. She had a dead, she had a dead, a dead turtle in her vagina. She didn't know it was there. I mean, that must have been okay, one hell of a no. drunken night. Okay, this is a woman that had a gun. Um, here it is. The man tries to fish out vibrator with. It's you see on Ranker. Man tries to fish out vibrator with salad tongues. It's unsuccessful. Salad tongues. No, I don't. No, I don't. Someone thinks it to me. This uh, is hey, real I, research. I've learned the stuff, stuff that's in here. This is, um, look at this. An entire cutlery set. The entire, maybe they didn't like the wedding gift. <laughs> this uh, is a sickness, 30, dude. But you know what, doctor? People who are doing um, shit like this, they're not worried about their electric bill. They're not worried about that gas bill or food bill because they have economic viability and they can trip on such. But if you're poor and, heaven forbid, black, and you're out here trying to fuck a, a, a solid tongue, and it ain't going to go down. Um, okay, so... This is absolutely bizarre, but this is the this stuff that um, that was there. But the thing for me was the anti-aircraft shell, which could have blown up everybody at work. Well, and uh, well, <laughs> that's only if a fire pit would have hit her butthole, you know, or his butthole, or whatever the case is. Uh, let me see: knives, rings, grenades. Um. This, yeah, they had, someone had a grenade. <laughs> and wow. this is why I'm saying to you that if people can't be happy with other human beings with this kind of, of strangeness, don't tell me that artificial uh, dolls and such 
or replace another human being because I'll tell you something. Put a grenade on anti-aircraft and stuff an electronic doll. Your chances of getting blown up are much greater than that. <laughs> well, yeah, you're talking about bringing in a, a suicide sex now. Soon as the target inoculates, detonate the charge, and it's the same charge, and it blows old dude to smithereens, you know, or if it's a chick, you know, it blows her up. Listen, man. You know, that opens up a whole can of worms I think most people aren't even contemplating in their security. Okay, this person has a grenade. I'll send you the link for this. A grenade. A um, grenade. I mean, what happened to the good old um, Vietnam razor blade in the snatch? You know, you go in there, you try to rape her, you get cut up. Now they're just blowed up. Well, no, we're just talking about the foolishness. Now, look at this. Somebody got a thermometer stuck. And how do you do that? Oh, I see the picture of the grenade. Jam that son of a gun up there um, and let it rest at an awkward angle. Well, I don't oh, know. I never done wow. that shit before. This woman accidentally swallowed a cockroach and um, tried to use the salad fork to get it out. Um, I mean, why would a cockroach be in her way of eating? You know, oh, that's a raisin? What the fuck? It's a cockroach. How can she not see it? Why she can see unless she's that greedy of a chick. I don't give a fuck. Chomp, 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 chomp. Cucumber hmm. challenge. So, no, that, that, that's why I was mentioning. Um, wow. So it, this is all I'm saying to you. Now, I'm going to have to leave you because I've got something else. But um, I just wanted to share that with you. But this issue, that's why I'm saying things like prostitution that they're pushing. It's not good. I don't care how anybody. And the, and, and the it's not good. All of that. And if you've got this awful stuff happening now, what will you get if you make this legal? No, but see, this and, is what I want to say. Tell people that it's a union, and of course, you know, people gonna there's gonna be uh, prostitution phobia, right? Oh, oh, stop it, doctor! So don't it, turn it like so that. You have to teach people to respect uh, no. prostitution in school. With the no, and no, all the value of prostitutes and how Hell they're important. no, and no. How, and, all of you could do, and the same way they have drag queens at the library. Oh. They're going to have madams and whores in the library to read to kids to teach them to, to respect and feel comfortable with prostitutes because they're people. Oh, doctor. And um, so this is, this is, this is the, it, it's the bottomless. I'm looking at this guy. He has a cell phone stuck up his rear end that's on the x ray. Wow. That's. I That's, guess, uh, <laughs> what is that, Sleep Mobile? Uh, oh, my God. A war veteran had a severe case of hemorrhoids and was afraid of losing his infection. He decided to use the object closer to him to stop the leak. It happened to be a bullet. Fortunately, the doctors were able to remove it. Oh, my God. This is utterly That's sick, crazy. doctor. Utterly sick. I'm just, just the people that are doctors. Oh, this is the one I remember. Someone has the light bulb. Uh, light bulb was removed from the rectum of a Pakistani prisoner. He did not have any knowledge of how it got there. <laughs> uh, he wanted to read in the dark. <laughs> uh, and, and these okay. are the, the leaders, though, doctor. It's not funny because these are the, your leaders. These are your uh, local county representatives. These are your state representatives. These are your federal you representatives. Like, now, look at, hold look on. The last one. Joe Biden. Now, the smile. Six, a 60-year-old man tried using a Coca-Cola bottle as a toy. Oh, my God. Oh, sick ass okay. baby boomers. No, the baby boomers are the sickest, most twisted generation ever. Oh, so they beat the Nazis, well, but I'm they could not, not keep there's morality. There's nothing new under the sun. What 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 happens is, is that civilization goes through periods of extreme decadence, like what we've got now. 
you look at this guy Epstein, he has no business. They talked about letting him be kept in his $77 million mansion. Why couldn't Bill Cosby stay in his million dollar mansion? Well, much less, if anything. Well, you know why. Still because Bill had the audacity to want to buy up NBC. Well, Bill Cosby has as much money as that man does. Bill Cosby has money. They're trying to take his money away. They're trying to help uh, Epstein. Epstein uh, is a crook and a human trafficker who has dirt on everybody. I just want to see him go down. I want to see Bill Clinton get shaped up. I want to see a lot of people. Right. Uh, the only thing I want to mention to you that I'm really enjoying is the fight between Nancy Pelosi and the uh, and Ocasio, even though she's not a sister. I'm really glad that these uh, people are putting Nancy Pelosi on that, although nobody wants to call her racist. It keeps wow. going. We're going to have to, in fact, I got to say this to you. You can tell me. Sorry about the audio. What's his name? Uh, Lacey Clay, that idiot. Lacey Clay. Up to y'all when, when people pointed machine guns at you and Ferguson. Uh, it's all after Ocasio to the back of Nancy Pelosi, but when his own voters had people pointing machine guns at them, he voted for further militarization of the police. Wow. Wow. But he can stand up for Nancy Pelosi, who doesn't need his help. Well, you know, the reality with Nancy, I don't care how you love her or like her, she only got about another seven years and she's on the dirt. She's done. I can't hear you. Uh, Nancy Pelosi is not long for this earth. I mean, just by chronological reasons. You know, she seven years from now, she will be worm meat. Either way it goes, just natural. You know, she's not the issue. It's the spirit of the Nancy that's the issue. The spirit that will resurrect itself in another young man or woman, but it would be moving towards the same degenerate, dysfunctional go. Well, I've got to leave you, my brother. I've got to go on with my uh, other call. But um, we must talk again. And we have to have some some fun, uh, some congressional black caucus fun. Um, <laughs> How come we don't have an ADOS caucus? We're trying to get this lead poison thing moving. Um <laughs> I will send you a GoFundMe link. We're trying, I mean, we're asking for a decent sum, but uh, we plan to run this thing. And if we get it our way, we're going to come to St. Louis, Chicago. If we can get the right hookup, we're going to go, we're going to do it locally, and then we're going to hit a couple of other cities and compare the unsafe water. We know it's bad everywhere, but for us to do it, some people that are like you and I to do it and prove make it. more for us to go. Into. So anyway, I must go. Uh, Y'all be good. Remember your brother. We're out here fighting the power, but we are bringing the ex-convicts, the youth, and and, and, and taking church people together. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm bringing the people together close. in a positive way. Right. right. All right. I got to run. All right, Bye. brother. Thank you. All right, y'all. Now, this is the part of the integrity. Unfortunately, I did not know that Mark was on. I thought he wasn't going to come on Carl Nelson's show today. I did not tape it. I don't have it. I'm sorry, y'all. But I have a powerful show that you all just bear witness to. We're still doing our little bag of tricks over here at TPIM. That's our live, no doubt. And we're going to have Sister Alexandria on. And that's beautiful. See, this is what makes my day. Also, Monday at 3 p.m. Central Time, 
I will have on Chief Sampson from the Seminole Nation. She's a wonderful woman. Just talked to her for about an hour for this show here. Great. Her soul's in the right spot. And I'm happy to have her. And I thank you, brother. Fix a go. Behind the scenes, man. <laughs> Great things are happening for the show. And it's because of you, the listener, you, the video watcher, Brother Bird, Brother Lawrence, Sister Alexandria, Sister D, and a whole host of others. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart, sincerely. Because you folks are what is the driving force behind the show, besides the spirit, because there's a spirit spiritual element to the show straight up and i love that because i love knowing that after this is done friends we still exist and maybe it will bring us all some joy and happiness on the other side brother king to know that we did what we could while we were on this earth 400 years from now, hopefully they look at this point in history and they will be honored to say, and we should be honored to receive what they say, is we at least try to unify this thing called humanity to make it work for all. Because if not, then prepare yourself for more mass murder. Prepare yourself for more sorrow. Prepare yourself for more frustration and slavery. So with that being said, on a high note such as that, this has been TPIM SR Live. Today's date, July 11th, 2019, year of our Lord. As always, live your life with integrity, without hate, envy, or greed. Brothers and sisters, let's try to be kinder to each other. Peace and power. <laughs>